Yeah. You're gonna go off the jumps. On the left? Yeah. yeah. So I'll go do. first. I've been What's watching up, the kids Let's, oh, up, How are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. What are you up to? Ski bum race. Sad. Yeah. You going in for someone? You no. Know, like, blow up their handicap? I race every week. Really? Yeah. I didn't know you did that. Oh yeah. Sick. You're gonna have fun. Show these racers who's boss. <laughs> Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Uh, we got a fun one today, huh Bob? I dare say it's our most expensive wall we've put together. Yeah, I guess if you had, excluding comparisons, because comparisons we had more skis up here. I don't know, man. You think even just this many Stokely's just yeah. exceeds that, those comparison articles? It's very possible. Could be. Um, but no, I thought this was fun. Uh, today we are going to talk about this new 2023 Stokely Montero AX. Um, but we've got a lot of 2023 Stokely's in the building, so I thought I started putting this wall together and I started with this one. And I was like, well, we should probably have this one so we can show the difference between the Montero and the laser, yep. which are minor. They're yep. there, but they're minor, and we'll get to that. And then I was like, well, I got to balance it out with two skis over there. So naturally, went Montero AR, thought that laser GS was cool. And then it just kind of got out of hand and just kept. Yeah. Kept going from there. The snowball effect was real when building yeah. this wall, but I mean that laser, laser WRT Pro. I know people are interested in that one. This one, so yeah, that thing's cool. I had to throw that one up there. Yeah, I we'll 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 keep our focus. I yeah. think <laughs> we'll do our best. Um, but here it is. This is the new Montero AX. We know you guys have been waiting for this one. We've had a lot of comments, questions asking when the Montero AX review is going to come out. Some people even went as far as like poking and prodding like how come you haven't done this yet right in a fun loving way yeah so we appreciate that <laughs> um really exciting ski so stokely has done away with the laser ar and the laser ax and now we have montero ar and montero ax um would you f do you think it's fair to say that when stokely made that announcement there was a little bit of panic I would say general freakout is a more appropriate term. Is that above um, panic? That's above a little panic. I think people were really, uh, they expected the worst. Yeah. And I think that they're getting the best. Yes. So. I agree 100%. You could probably end the review right there. Right. <laughs> uh, but we won't because that's what we, well, not what we do. We'll probably talk about this thing for 20 minutes. Um, but they did away with the Laser AR and the Laser AX in favor of these Montero AX and Montero AR skis. Um, I think part of it was people were just like nervous that they weren't called lasers anymore. Sure. I think the performance really is pretty similar to the outgoing skis. And I think taking them out of the laser line kind of makes more sense. Yeah, and I think that that's just a, a brief segue to your Storm Rider over there that sure. you have. Yeah. Um, we kind of discussed that a little bit where Montero is now kind of bridging a gap between Laser and Storm Rider. Yeah. So maybe just from a marketing perspective, it makes, makes some sense. I think so. Um, but, you know, certainly it doesn't... The, like you said, the performance hasn't changed enough to warrant a whole new category. It's more just... Yes. I think the wording of it is is effective. Agree, 100%. Um, so let's take a look at this Montero AX specifically and how it changes from this ski. Um, we are sold out of the Laser AX. Luckily, this is one of our coworkers' personal <laughs> skis that we had him bring in today so we could kind of talk about the changes. Um, I think starting with shape. Really, all there is to say about shape is that it's two millimeters wider. Yeah. Um, and that's true both in the tip and the waist dimension, the tail is just one millimeter wider. So as you pointed out before we started filming, it is one edge thickness wider, yep. which is really pretty minor. It's a lot of fuss for one edge width of change. Two millimeters is not much. Right. Yeah. Um, now, as far as we can tell, you know, we've been kind of looking at these skis back to back you know we went as far as kind of stacking them together 
looking at the difference in the tip shapes, stuff like that. That increase in width is about all I can tell for change in shape. Yeah, I would call it negligible at best. Yes. At most. If there is a change, if there are further changes in shape, it is 100% negligible. Yeah, and not just from us like putting the ski back to back, uh, but skiing them. Yep. You know, in in that experience with them on the feet on snow. Totally. Not, not a not a wild change at all. No. Um, I will admit that when I first saw this ski, for whatever reason, probably the graphic, yeah. it looked like it had more early taper and more rocker. And I had that thought and opinion of it up until we literally put them back to back with a laser AX. And then yeah. it was like, oh, no, yeah. that's pretty much the same. Now, it is important to point out that, you know, Differing from, say, something like that Laser GS over there, there is a tiny bit of rocker in these skis. And when I say a tiny bit, I really I think it's, it's certainly fair to call it a tiny bit. It almost doesn't right. show up until you decamber it, and then you get, like, I don't know, 10 centimeters of extra rise there. Yep. But very, very, very low splay. Um, now, I think the early taper in this ski is important to point out, you know, again, if you were to Versus put it right next to the Laser GS yeah. or even this Laser SX over here, there's noticeably more taper. Um, and that was another thing that kind of just messed with my head a little bit or my eyes. It looked like this ski had more taper, but really doesn't. Right. Really about the same. Yeah. Um, now, similarly, construction is just about the same too with some just minor minor changes yeah light wood core you know they're they're calling it the their fuma and balsa wood core uh two sheets of metal top and bottom yep and then correct me here torsion flex control flex torsion, flex control. torsion control the f comes first <laughs> okay <laughs> flex torsion control yep um as opposed to turtle grip yes that we had here so we were talking about this a little earlier it's a, uh, a shorter slit in that top sheet of metal. So by cutting it, they're allowing the torsional stiffness to articulate. Yep. Um, and so when you're putting the ski on edge, that allows it to get more uh, ski on the snow, leading to that smooth feel. And we'll kind of talk about that in terms of performance characteristics. How yeah, just smoother, easier initiation and right. release. Yep. That, that word smooth comes up a whole lot when we're talking about every single ski on this wall yep. um, and specifically this AX here, as opposed to the turtle grip, which extends further into the ski. So when that starts to flex, it actually locks together. Yep. So maybe a little bit stiffer in the flex of the shovel in terms of initiation, but not a huge difference. No, yeah, I think the, uh, and I, literally got off the phone with the president of yeah. Stokely North America who was in Switzerland like less than two hours ago because I, it, they're very similar concepts and I wanted to confirm with him the difference yeah. between them. And that is kind of the, the big thing is the, the way that those interlock yeah. um, where this is just kind of trying to take a little bit of torsional stiffness just out of the very, very ends of the ski. Yeah. So it's very similar but there is a, a difference to it as well. Yeah, and just the way that they're building these skis, we talk about this a lot where pretty much anything that we sell in this warehouse is made from wood, metal, plastic, you know, that kind of variety yep. of materials. The way in which Stokely puts them together and the quality of those materials is what sets that apart. Yes. And I know you've talked about your rubber dust before. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. I was going to lay off the rubber <laughs> dust obsession on this one. But no, I, I do think it's cool. And and it, it's, I was going to say every once in a while, but it, it's probably more frequent than that. You know, it, it, this is a, a somewhat regular comment that we see where people question the difference between, I don't know, what, what brand should we use as an example? Vocal, Blizzard, yeah. Nordica. People question the difference between this and a ski from, say, a, a bigger box brand, so yeah. to speak. And we wouldn't just stand here and, like, say that it existed if it didn't exist. Like, right. 
you know, I could I can understand somebody thinking that you would do that from a marketing perspective, like trying to justify the price tag on this by saying that it's better. There is a noticeable difference. Yep. In my opinion, both in just like holding it and looking at it and also when you ski it. Yep. It's a tough thing to describe in words. And I've seen other people at like, you know, if you put uh, I was just on a forum on, on the Ski Diva website this morning, which isn't really designed for me as a non-female <laughs> skier, but it was somebody talking about their reaction to this ski and they kind of struggled to put it into words too. And it, mm -hmm. they were just like, no, it, it is, there is something there. Yeah. Um, so you could say that about right. all the skis on this wall is they just have a, a special feel. Um, now back to the Montero AX in particular, what do you think, Bob? Uh, I guess we should bring up our game of you have zero skis. Yeah. <laughs> and your parameter is 80 millimeters or 80 millimeters around 80 millimeters. Sure. Say plus or minus four. Plus or minus four. You what have zero you, skis. Yeah, you have zero skis. What are you taking? I, I take this. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it as that 80 millimeter option, it rails GS carve turns. Uh, it bends the range of this ski from, you know, expert level to an intermediate is what makes this thing so impressive. Yeah. That it does have that flex that you're able to get into it, yeah. but it also just has a stiffer tail, uh, just that high quality construction that allows a lot of different skiers to be on this thing. So. Yeah. I think the range is super impressive. You don't have to ski it super fast. I mean, I, I'm not even going to point to anything on this wall because you don't really have to ski those fast as well. Maybe um, a laser GS. Maybe laser GS, but like that's, to, that's to like get the best performance. Sure. You know, like there's other skis that you have to get going before it starts to go. Um, <clears throat> this one, though, is a little bit different. So between that GS carving ability and that all-mountain versatility, I don't see a whole lot that's really superior to this out there. So It's pretty darn good. Yeah. And we got on them, you know, I would say we skied these on softer versus firmer conditions. At least, and especially the footage that we have to go yeah. along with this review is there's a lot of softer snow, both right. like fresh cold snow yep. and also kind of springier conditions. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting because Sure, I guess I would rather have a Stormrider 88 if it was that soft. I think we kind of both, you know, wished we were on something a little bit firmer so that we could get that GS style performance out of it, but certainly I, no complaints. I got there, which yeah. we'll get to in a specific application, yeah. but go on. Um, you know, when that snow got cut up and chunked up, like, pretty darn stable and smooth. There's nothing yeah. that really makes this thing deflect or get, you know, weary no. of speed or anything like that. No, and I think a big reason for that is the taper and the tip shape. Yep. You know, if you had like this tip shape, that's going to hook up and, and kind of react to things more quickly than this, yep. especially in that softer, more variable snow condition. And then also that, that slit in the tip, yep. you know, that's allowing the tip to kind of like like you were saying, like articulate over some bumpier terrain, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Um, now, you mentioned railing GS turns, and it does. It makes beautiful, yeah. beautiful turns. If I'm going out and just enjoying the resort, I'm not pushing it, I'm not like testing my ability as a skier, I'm not worried about how fast I get from point A to point B. If I'm just enjoying carving, I don't want anything more than this. Yeah. Now, we participate in a weekly local race league. And here in Stowe, it's called the Ski Bomb Race League. Some places it's beer league racing. It's pretty, you know, recreational, casual yeah. racing. But you're still in a race course. And around here, there's like a ton of really serious racers that like take it pretty darn seriously. They go fast. Multiple people <laughs> slipping the course. Yeah. So it was one of those softer days, but through slipping and slipping and slipping, it was really firm by yeah. the time we got to race. Um, probably obvious in the intro to this video, but I raced on these for a day. And I will say, you know, if I, I don't really have many negative things to say about this other than it didn't love being in a race course. 
Okay. There were like a couple moments in a race course where like I wanted this tip shape or that tip shape. I wanted yeah. a little bit more grip and pull out of the forebody of the ski. And it just, it's partly my own fault. You know, I was like late on a gate and then had to make up that turn on the next gate. And it just like, it wasn't like knife like yeah. precision like you would get from a true race ski. But like, it's not supposed to be. Right, you have a light, this is relatively right. light. It's got a lighter wood core to it. Right, and look yeah. at all these other skis. Laser SX, Laser GS, WRT, both Pro and ST. Yep. Like, those are all better racing skis. Sure. So it would be weird if Stokely made their 80 underfoot all mountain carver really good at racing yep. too, because they already, are, they already have that. And what you, I don't even want to use the word lose, because it's not, it wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. I would say replace. Right, or lacks. What yeah. it lacks on like the race side of the spectrum, yeah. it more than makes up for, and it's just versatility and like playfulness, kind of. Yeah. Like it does have a, a more fun loving feel than most skis with two sheets of metal. And you raced on what, the 178? Yes. One okay. Yeah. So this is the 173, just for Which reference. neither of us have skied. Nope. We, we did most of our testing on the 178, yeah. which it, for me is perfect. Yeah. I think you would probably prefer a, a 183. Yeah. But even that 178 was pretty darn supportive for you. Yeah, and for reference, I raced on this ski. The, that same day, right? The AR and yeah. the 180, which, you know, kind of like you, I was like, well, it, this did great. I felt like super confident in the race course. Yeah. But I w also felt quite a bit further away from the gates sure. than on other more race oriented skis. Yeah. And like I had fun racing on these. Yeah. I think like what really, what really kind of made me realize its limitations was like looking at results. Sure. And I was kind of like, oh, that's not, you know, normally I'm at least scratching the surface of top 10 and I think I was in the high teens on this ski or something yeah. like that. So hard to kind of argue against numerical results right. there. But again, like the only reason I'm bringing that up is because I think it's a good way to like describe the ski. Yeah. And it's not a race ski, it's an all mountain carver. And people that are worried about this going away, that's not a race ski either. Sure. Did it lean slightly more towards that side of the spectrum? I think like you could say yes and I wouldn't stand here and argue with you necessarily, but they're more similar than different. Yeah, that's only if we're really using like that 80 millimeter as a threshold. You know, right. and we're we invent these thresholds ourselves. Right. You know, like oh, under 80 front side, you know, like right. that's kind of that's just something that we've invented. It's not that that 2 millimeters is taking it out of the race course and putting it into a strictly all mountain category. Right. You know, it's just, it's, it's gradients. Exactly. So great, great ski. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's pretty special. Yeah. And like, you know, we didn't really talk about off trail a whole lot. You know, we got it on in soft, softer snow, but like bumpy snow, we didn't ski moguls on this, but not like real moguls, not real moguls but I wouldn't have any issue taking this into any type of no. mogul field on the planet. No, and I think that's that's part of what makes it such a cool ski. Yeah. And and a big reason why this gained such a strong following yeah. or the Laser AR. Um, I don't think we mentioned it yet in this video, but here at Stowe, you see like more of these than anything else on yeah. certain days, which is crazy because yeah. that ski's expensive. And maybe that says something about the people that live in right. Stowe <laughs> and their financial uh, capabilities. But people love it because it works really, really well for northern Vermont terrain. Yeah, and really, snow conditions. Right, and, yeah. really firm groomers. And then you want to go ski some moguls or ski some trees even, like non-fresh snow trees. Yeah. Great ski. And this really, really carries that forward. Yeah. Um, I, I was thinking of another ski um, that's come up in our conversations a little bit, the Doberman, Doberman Spitfire 80 RB from Nordica. Yeah. That ski has two sheets of metal. That has an 80 millimeter waist width. That ski feels more like a race ski 
than this, mm -hmm. but it's way more punishing and more demanding if you try and take it into moguls and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe punishing is not the right word, but demanding. Yeah, I would I would say punishing is okay in the moguls. Okay. That's a that's where this you know. I wouldn't ever use that term. Right. Not not punishing at all. No. Stiffer tail than you might expect, I would say. Like if you're it doesn't reward bad technique. Like you yep. can push through it, especially in the shovel and forebody, but like if you get a little bit back, it's gonna let you know about it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's I would I would expect fine. nothing less because needs that's, to. Yeah, it needs to in order to get you that energy. So. Yeah. If it didn't, it would just it wouldn't have the same just rewarding finish to a turn on a groomer. Correct. So, pretty awesome ski is. Yeah. Um, do what you got to do to get on them. You know, like <laughs> my, you know, my in my little written section, I talked about how I felt grateful every time I get to ski on yeah. a Stokely ski, and we sure. were talking before this about just little side hustles you can do to make that extra thousand dollars to justify you know right. the purchase of something like this and so. that's probably a good way to end this video too yeah. if you've got thirteen hundred dollars burning a hole in your pocket go buy a montero ax yeah you will not be disappointed if you don't have thirteen hundred dollars burning a hole in your pocket go get a second job yeah maybe take out a home equity loan as you pointed out they give personal loans for pretty frivolous things right <laughs> you know it's all kind of a joke but it really is a special ski. Right. Don't jeopardize your financial situation or burn your credit, but, <laughs> you know, do what right. you can, you know. Yeah. No, it's, 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 pretty, it's really sweet. cool. Um, Stokely is offering it as a system with mm -hmm. the Strive binding. You can also get it flat. The Strive binding is really cool because they have color matching Strive bindings for both this and the AR. They're very sharp looking. Yep. Um, in one of the video clips, you said, like, I can see it bend when I was skiing it. Mm -hmm. And I responded, like, I can feel it bend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and through that conversation and, and through skiing it, I couldn't help but think about how, how cool this would feel with a pivot on it, just to, like, further accentuate the amount of flex right, right underfoot. So if I were to own one, I would like to, uh, I, I think I would put a pivot on it. Yeah. That's part of my pivot snobbery, too. Yeah, and we were actually talking, I think, about the lack of appropriate color. I mean, you'd have to go raw raw or white or something like that. You might have to dip back into previous years. And maybe that goes to show how much Bob and I like this ski, that our conversation pretty quickly went to what color pivot are you going <laughs> to choose. <laughs> yep, that's what I stay up at night thinking about. <laughs> yeah, um, so that's it. I think we covered most everything. Certainly let us know if you have any questions. I know there's a lot of curiosity about these skis. I hope we answered most of your burning questions. Yeah. Um, but certainly let us know if you are curious about anything else or, or any of these other skis up here. Um, we'll almost certainly talk about that AR at some point. Yep. WRT Pro, that's a cool one too. It's a lot of ski over there. Yep. Um, so let us know and we'll talk to you soon about more Stokely skis. Bye.